Hey there. Today I'm going to be talking about a single news story, which is something that I don't usually do. But this one story says so much about the topics that I cover on this channel that I think it's worth unpacking in more detail. I really think it confirms all of the things I've been saying. Last week, the Wall Street Journal revealed that Mike Pompeo, the U.S. Secretary of State, had overruled almost everybody at the State Department to keep the U.S. war on Yemen going. He made this choice to continue the slaughter just to preserve a measly $2 billion in arms sales. This story reveals the sad truth of U.S. policy in Yemen and U.S. foreign policy more generally. Let's start this sad story with a small bit of good news. In August, the outrageously expensive John S. McCain 2019 National Defense Authorization Act became law. As I've talked about before, opposition to the U.S.-Saudi war on Yemen is increasing in Congress. All the serious attempts to stop the war were kept out of the 2019 NDAA, but the war hawks couldn't keep Yemen out completely. As of last month, U.S. refueling of Saudi and UAE planes is contingent on the State Department certifying that those countries are making an effort to murder fewer civilians. This is not enough, but it is something. The Defense Department has also been required to do a review of its actions in Yemen, but the hopes were much, much higher for the State Department. The thinking was that these diplomats would be able to look at the issues a little more objectively, and folks were really looking forward to this certification process. We were all very disappointed. On September 10th, Mike Pompeo, the head of the State Department, certified that Saudi Arabia and the UAE were making good faith efforts to stop the war, provide humanitarian aid, and correct the policies that have led to the slaughter of over 16,000 civilians. The certification was accompanied by a standard memo citing the evils of Iran that could have been produced by the Saudi government. This was terribly disappointing. Last week we learned that we weren't the only ones disappointed by this decision. The Wall Street Journal attained a memo that made it clear that almost all of the State Department's own experts thought that Mike Pompeo should not certify. They knew that Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates were taking none of the actions that the State Department was required by U.S. law to investigate and certify. But Mike Pompeo certified anyway, because he would rather have another $2 billion worth of missiles sold by the United States and sent into Yemeni school buses. This quite possibly broke the law. Why did he do it? At this point, I think it's worth looking into who exactly Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is. He came into national prominence when he was elected as a Tea Party Republican from Kansas in 2010. Though he endorsed Marco Rubio in 2016, he quickly reconciled himself to Trump world, and he was rewarded, first as head of the CIA, and then as head of the State Department. So he looks kind of like a good anti-establishment guy, right? A Tea Party Republican from Kansas and a born-again Trump kid. Unfortunately, that's all bullshit. Mike Pompeo is the elite personified. He was born in hyper-wealthy Orange County, California. He attended West Point and Harvard Law School, two of the world's most elite institutions. After law school, he worked at one of the most prestigious law firms in the country. In 1998, he moved to Kansas with some West Point buddies to set up a defense contractor. His financial disclosure forms make him one of the poorest members of the Trump administration, but I find that hard to believe, considering the fact that he sold his company to the massive private equity firm Highland Capital Management in 2007. My guess is that his wife or his son is probably a lot richer than that. His entire resume is filled with links to the Koch brothers and defense contractors like Lockheed Martin and Raytheon. Mike Pompeo is the military-industrial complex. This guy isn't anti-establishment. He is the establishment. So when Mike Pompeo had the chance to do the right thing, the decent thing, and even the legal thing on Yemen, of course he didn't do it. His entire career up to this point made this sort of decision-making inevitable. The fact that this guy is one of the most powerful, trusted, and well-rewarded members of the Trump administration should make it very clear that Donald Trump doesn't represent anything new. U.S. foreign policy is still completely owned by the military-industrial complex. 
This is profoundly sad, but we should be very grateful to the Wall Street Journal for running this story and making the truth about Yemen and the man who runs U.S. foreign policy so painfully clear. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and please click the bell next to the subscribe button to get notifications each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help me keep making videos like this one, you can click on the PayPal link in the description to donate directly, or you can click on the Patreon link here to find out more about my crowdfunding thing. Thanks.